so I want to thank uh, Chelsea, Lisa, Gabrielle, and Evan, um, as well as everybody on the review committee, all the other staff and the LPR board members for all your work producing this really beautiful issue um, and for including the submission about Ellicott City and its history. So um, in 1772, um, which was before the creation of America, um, the water, well, what we call America, the waters of the Patapsco River and the surrounding lush valley um, called to three Quaker brothers, the Ellicott's, um, to settle this new town. And this year, the town's celebrating, do the math, it's 250th anniversary. Uh, there's going to be concerts and history lectures and art shows and um, an original musical and beer. They're doing commemorative beer. Don't, don't miss it. Um, so Hoko Polizzo, which is the Howard County Poetry and Literature Society, uh, created a project to help commemorate the history in Ellicott City. Um, I especially want to thank Mike Clark, who was generous enough to help guide the creation, and he wrote a lovely foreword to the collection. So thanks, Mike. Um, so you can take a walk along Main Street through the end of this month to see the poetry posters in the windows along Main Street. Uh, we've published a collection of the poems, which is called Through the Eyes of Poets, Ellicott City at 250. Um, with introductions to offer background and context. So the poems relate to the town directly, such as Rita Dove's poem about um, one of Ellicott City's residents, the mathematical genius, um, uh, Benjamin Banneker, or kind of tangentially, um, such as Walt Women's poem about uh, a, the Civil War and loss, um, or Emily Dickinson's uh, short poem about wheat. Um, so a week from today, uh, on June 12th uh, at the Howard County Museum of History near the old courthouse in Ellicott City. Hoko Polizza will host a reading from the collection um, featuring poets, uh, Laura Chauvin, Mar Scott Earhart, Patty Ross, and Fred Foote. Some people know those folks. They're reading their original work and we'll have other guests reading other poems from the anthology. Um, I'll put information about registering for that reading in the chat. Um, so I'm gonna read two poems from the collection today. I'm gonna start with the river, which is where everything about Ellicott City starts. Um, so Edgar Allan Poe used to take the train from his rented room in Baltimore out to the riverside home of his friend, John Pendleton Kennedy. I'm not sure if the river he's writing about in this poem is the Patapsco, but um, I like to think it is. Um, Poe's early poetry was usually about women that he had fallen in love with. Um, uh, and this poem to the river was published in 1829 in his first collection, which was called Al Al-Raf, Tamerlane and, and Minor Poems, which was published to very little acclaim. <laughs> um, so uh, likely directed at a young woman that Poe met in college. Um, this poem uh, talks all about her beauty and goodness. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the father of that woman uh, and Poe's foster father did not want the pair to marry, so they didn't and the romance died. But the poem's still around. So it's called To the River, by Edgar Allan Poe. Fair river, in thy bright clear flow of crystal wandering water, thou art an emblem of the glow of beauty, the unhidden heart, the playful maziness of art in old Alberto's daughter. But when within thy wave she looks, which glistens then and trembles, why then the prettiest of brooks her worshipful, worshiper resembles. For in my heart, is in thy stream, her image deeply lies, his heart, which trembles at the beam of her soul searching eyes. All right. So Ellicott City is really, it's just a town that's really thick with history. And, um, and history is a, a story that's written by the victors, you know, whether in this small Maryland town or in global conflicts. Um, in this poem, poet Lucille Clifton speaks instead for victims. Um, Clifton, who, who she lived in Howard County for many years. Um, she, you know, she won an Emmy and a National Book Award. She wrote this poem for her 1991 collection, Quilting, which has many poems about history and particularly about slavery. Um, his, Clifton did not want slavery and the history of this country's racism and cruelty to be forgotten. Um, if you read much of Clifton's work, you know that she didn't put into uppercase many words in her poetry. Most of the words are, are not capitalized. And in this poem, it's notable that she capitalizes the word history. Um, I wanna give a special thanks to her daughters who granted us the permission to share her work in this collection. Um, a few years before she died, she told me, 
as long as America does not believe that our shared history is what has made both of us what we are, all of us, somebody has to say something. And I'm a poet, surely I can say something. So here is, I am accused of tending to the past by Lucille Clifton. I am accused of tending to the past as if I made it, as if I sculpted it with my own hands. I did not. This past was waiting for me when I came, a monstrous unnamed baby, and I with my mother's itch took it to breast and named it history. She is more human now, learning languages every day, remembering faces, names, and dates. When she is strong enough to travel on her own, beware, she will. Thank you all.